welcome to EduSpace, your career choice. We all know this is the hottest educational show here in Mzanzi. My name is Logan Lawson and come with me as we talk about diamond cutting and polishing. Don't forget to tell your friends, to tell their friends to tune into the hottest educational show. But in the meantime, please retweet us at Soweto TV channel and don't forget to use the hashtag EduSpace. Share with us your thoughts and your views and what other careers you'd like us to cover. But for now, we're going to the streets to get our five quick facts. Masam Ben. My name is Papi Chazonebungwane. My name is Michael Peterson. My name is uh, Redeemer Kenius. Michael Kundane. I'm from Johannesburg Polytechnic Institute. I come from JPI. I'm from Kenwood. Yeah. I go to JPI. And I'm in grade 12. Doing 12, grade 12. Yes, grade 10. The diamond is the hardest rock on earth, so I, can, so I may say. A diamond is a rearrangement of carbon atoms. Diamonds have the highest hardness of any bulk material. Because of this, many important industries use diamonds as tools for cutting and polishing things. Many of them are clear, but some of them have colors like yellow, red, blue, green and pink. Diamonds of a different color are called fancies. Big diamonds are very rare and are worth a lot of money. Which province mines diamonds? I think it's the Northern Cape. Kimberley is the capital city of South Africa's Northern Cape province. It's known for its 90th century diamond mines like the deep, hand-dug big hole. Nearby, the Kimberley Mine Museum is a recreation of the town in its heyday and displays jewelry and uncut diamonds. The William Humphreys Art Gallery exhibits South African work old masters drawing and 17th century European paintings and modern art. Diamonds are a metastable allotrope of carbon where the carbon atoms are formed in a structure called diamond lattice. Most natural diamonds are formed at high temperature and pressure at depths of 140 to 190 kilometers in the Earth's mantle. Carbon containing materials provide the carbon source, and the growth occurs over periods from 1 billion to 3.3 billion years. Diamonds are found at depths of approximately 150 to 200 kilometers below the surface of the Earth. Well, diamonds are actually they're not graded like other carbon compounds, they're actually graded from D to Z, and according to their clarity and what's this, uh, their color. GIA created the first and now globally accepted standard for grading diamonds, color, clarity, cut and carat weight. Today, the four C's of diamond quality is the universal method for assessing the quality of any diamond anywhere in the world. The creation of diamond four C's meant two very important things. Diamond quality could be communicated in a universal language and diamond customers could now know exactly what they were about to purchase. The four C's when referring to diamond value are color, clarity, cut and carat weight. All four factors are equally important in determining the final cost of a diamond. Hey you, yes you, digging in your nose for diamonds. We got our five quick facts, but let's go speak to our lecturer and learn a little bit more about real diamonds. Masambian. Harry Oppenheimer Diamond Training was started in 1990 and has since grown to become an internationally recognized educational institution to providing specialized training in the diamond manufacturing and evaluation sectors. They strive to uphold the highest level of integrity and academics through professional education. Chris, welcome to Edu Space and thank you so much for having us over. Thank you very much. Chris, I'm curious to know what is a diamond cutter and a diamond polisher? Well, I would say it's really the same thing. A diamond cutter, diamond polisher is the same thing. It's a worker in the diamond industry manufacturing diamonds. What are the different courses that you offer? We offer various courses. <clears throat> we offer the diamond cutting courses, which is uh, the actual polishing of the diamond. Then we have rough diamond evaluation courses that we have. We have entrepreneurial courses where we combine the rough diamond course and the diamond uh, polishing course. We have learnership courses where we uh, do the learnership and also artisan courses we do. We have computer courses that we do and we have diamond grading courses. So we cover the full spectrum of courses actually 
in, in, in the school year. Chris, why are entrepreneurial courses important and are there prerequisites for it? Well, the entrepreneurial course is, you know, a lot of people come into the diamond industry and they want to become diamond dealers and so forth. And to do that, you need a bit of background to the polishing because, you know, the more you know about something, the better. The prerequisite for that is that you must attend our rough diamond evaluation course first and then the, the polishing component of it is a six-week polishing course that they can attend just to get the basics of how a diamond is polished. I mean, seeing that classes are so practical, how do students get assessed? Well, the school is, a reg is registered with the Mining Qualifications Authority and all our assessors are registered with the Mining Qualification Authority and we also have our own moderators also registered with them. So we, we follow the, uh, the assessment guides that's been published by the Mining Qualifications Authority, uh, which are the unit standards and they get assessed against the unit standard. What is the importance of having theoretical knowledge in a practical field like this? I think it's very, very important because how the theory is actually the explanation of what we're going to do. And with diamonds, uh, the theory component is very important because we can't look at the diamond at the same time. So I have to explain to you and you've got to see what I'm telling you. So uh, the theory component is extremely important and uh, we cover that. For every practical exercise, there's a theoretical component to it. I mean, Chris, this seems like a very lengthy process. How long does it take to complete a course like this? Well, our course here at, this, at Harry Oppenheimer at Diamond Range School takes a, a, a learnership program course, which is you either teach them to do the top or the bottom. That we take uh, six months. It takes six months to complete that. Our own polishing course, we, we teach them to cut a complete stone. It also takes six months to cut a complete stone, top and bottom of a, rock, of a diamond. You know, but once you finish these courses, it's like anything. You're not a master at it yet. You must go out and go work then and gain experience. It's like anything. You know, you take somebody who's been uh, at university for four years, studying to become a, a lawyer, then he must still go and do his articles to see how to work, actually. The same thing must apply here. Yeah. Is it possible for students to work overseas after obtaining their qualification? For sure, sir. We get, we get many students from abroad coming here. And they are very happy to do the courses here yeah, because they can apply it in their own countries. I mean, Chris, this seems so interesting. But the question on my mind is, what are the fees per diamond cutting and polishing course? Learnerships is 35,000 Rand, which is inclusive of that. 35,000 Rand for the six month course. Our polishing course, our complete diamond polishing course is also 35,000 Rand for the complete course. The rough evaluation course is 9,900, inclusive of that. The diamond grading courses are, are more expensive. They run about 18 to 20,000 Rand for those courses because we make use of instructors from abroad to come and present those courses so that we get the best for our students. Are there any bursary opportunities for students who can't really afford these kind of fees? Yes, there are definitely. We, uh, we apply, uh, we source the bursaries and then we um, advertise and we call, uh, call for students to come and apply if they want to attend and then we give them the bursaries. Um, for the full course actually and it's mainly for the learnership programs so they get a bursary for that and we even uh, pay them a stipend well Chris I must say it was lovely chatting to you thank you so much for having us thank you very much it was a pleasure a real pleasure I mean you heard what our lecturer just said I definitely need to go back home and check if the diamonds I have are natural well we're going to an ad break we'll be right back with more edge space your career choice Everyone wants to be a diamond, but few are willing to be cut and polished. Welcome back to EduSpace, your career choice. It is now time for us to speak to our student of the day. Let's go check her out. Sintli, hi. hi, how are you? I'm good and yourself. I'm well, thank you. 
Take a seat. Thank please. you so much, Zintle. You're welcome. See that you're really busy there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zintle, welcome to Edu Space and thank you so much for having us over. Thank you. My first question to you is how did you find out about diamond cutting? I found out about diamond cutting through the internet. Okay. So I was just on the net and Googling, you know, these different types of careers. And then diamond cutting was very interesting to me. Why did you choose to study diamond cutting and polishing? Diamond cutting was a challenge for me because I actually studied accounting at school. So I wanted like a challenge, something that will keep me alive a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what kind of assignments are you required to do? All right. We are required to do like your history of diamonds, your securities of diamonds, your health and safety. We even do first aid. What do you use the first aid for in diamond cutting and polishing? Um, you need first aid because firstly we work with machinery. So if anything happens in the workplace, let's say somebody slurps, bump his head, then obviously if you have first aid, you can always assist. When you start working with real diamonds in your class, Okay, we start working with real diamonds after you tackle the theory part of diamond cutting and after you've learned the different tools and equipments that you need to actually do the practical diamond cutting. You mentioned theoretical work. What do you learn in theory? You learn your history of diamonds, how are they mined, where do you get them, and you even learn the theory side of how you apply the practical side of diamond cutting. For instance, putting on your first facet, we call it a table. So you need to know the theory side of it before you can actually sit on a table and polish. Zintle, I've only been here for about three hours and I've learned so much about diamonds. What has been the most fascinating thing you've learned about diamonds? Wow, what's fascinating? To actually take a diamond from its rough and put on each and every facet until you have like 57 facets and it gives you a round brilliant shape. Zintle, I've heard about the four C's when it comes to diamonds. What is that and what is the importance of it? Okay, the four C's are the characteristics of a diamond. It's the color, the cut, the clarity, and the carat weight. So now these four C's are very important because they determine the value of the diamond. So you need to look at each and every characteristics to be able to value the stone. What has been the most difficult assignment you've ever had to do? I would actually say it's the bottom halves and the PG. Because if you make one silly mistake, then your stone won't be able to reflect. Because at the end of the day, the diamond needs to reflect. I mean, you're speaking to someone who doesn't know what bottom halves or PG is. What is that? Bottom halves are 16 facets that you put on the bottom part of the diamond, which allows the diamond to actually reflect. So if you have good lighting, we normally use UV lights. So if you have a, a UV light and there's good lighting, then the diamond is able to reflect. Where do you see yourself once you've completed your studies? I actually want to be a diamond dealer and have my own factory to be able to supply people with stones and even buy stones from overseas, Egypt, USA, all these countries. You seem like a very enthusiastic person. What advice would you give the person sitting at home, watching the show and says, I want to be like her? Okay, firstly, they should come to Harry Oppenheimer Diamond Training School. They offer rough diamond evaluation course, diamond cutting course, and the GIA courses. Well, Zintle, it was lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for having us over. Likewise. Awesome. You know what? To be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing. But we're going to an ad break. We'll be right back with more Edge Space, your career choice. Welcome back to Edge Space, your career choice. You heard it from our lecture. You heard it from our student, and now it's time to speak to an inspirational man, which is a professional. Come with me, Masamben. Molefi Litsiki Diamond Holdings, CC, is a South African-based diamond and custom-made jewelry manufacturing corporation that was established in 2005. The corporation holds both the diamond dealers and the diamond beneficiation licenses. Hey, how are you doing? How are you, man? I'm all thanks in yourself. All good, man. Good, good, man. I hope yeah. I didn't get you in the busy. Nah, not at all, eh? Yeah. You want to take a seat? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, man. 
What a beautiful space you have here. I mean, welcome to Edu Space and thank you so much for having us over. Thank you, thank you for coming through. Why did you decide to get into an industry like this? Funny thing, it's, it, for a long time, it's something that I never thought I would get into, you know, mainly because, um, I mean, growing up, my father used to be a diamond polisher. And, and you know, it, it's funny how you live with somebody in the house that's always telling you about diamonds and yet you've never seen or touched one in your life. And, and I mean, it was taking him away from us so much because uh, he was spending a lot of time at work cutting and polishing. And until I got to high school and, and then there were days when we would travel to school together and then I would have to wait for him and then we'd go home together. And, and, and so during those waits where I would need to wait for him, that's how I got introduced to, to diamonds, you know. Uh, I remember one time I was sitting in the factory waiting for them and one of the polishers was polishing and while he was polishing, um, and he picked up the tongue, uh, you know, where they had set the stove. And there was a spark that just caught me from there, you know, and I was fascinated by how something that looks so rough, you know, something that, I mean, some diamonds, when you look at them in the rough, there's nothing attractive about them at all, you know, could become something so beautiful, you know, and making women cry most of the time. And, <laughs> and, and that caught me, and, and that's really what, what sort of got me into it, you know, and just seeing the brilliance that would come out of it and how one could take a piece of carbon at the end of the day and make such beauty out of it is what really caught me into it, you know? As a diamond cutter and polisher, what is your role in an industry like this? Well, I mean, for me, um, I, it, it's something that I got to know because my father was in it. And, and, and I've been trying to play a role where I can introduce it, you know, to the world out there so that people can know about it. People can also benefit from it per se, you know? I mean, South Africa, we, as a country, we were in the top five of the producing countries in the world. We used to be number one at some point, and yet we, we've never employed much people in the industry. It's always been kept very thin and small, you know, but the idea is to make it broader, open doors and, and see it, um, or see South Africa per se, manufacturing inside, playing a huge role in contributing to the overall consumption of diamonds internationally. Is this an industry that is difficult to get into? I mean, since you're saying, that it's always kept thin and small? It, look, it is. It's, um, it's, it's not an easy one, mainly because it's, it's one industry that no bank finances. Um, so if, if you're going to get into it, you need to either have your own money or have a backing from an overseas company or something like that, you know. Secondly, there's no varsity that offers any studies with regards to cutting and polishing. You know, you can go study geology at varsities and stuff, but there's no, nothing specific to diamond cutting and polishing. You have colleges such as Diamond Education College or the Harry Oppenheimer College where they offer um, short courses, you know, um, which look it's good but at the end of the day it, it's one of those the skills takes more than the the, the, the time allocated yeah. to it so um, the, the challenge then becomes being able to get an in-service training after you've studied so that you can learn more because I think the learning you get more on the job than you actually do get at school you know the school will teach you the basics but the the, the, the learning you, you'll get it more on the job you know I can imagine getting into this business must have been hard, seeing that there's no funding in this industry. How did you do it? Um, starting out was not easy, um, I must say, you know, but it was a case of, you know, when you found something that you really fallen in love with, you, regardless of how tough it is, yeah. you always strive to find a way somehow. So whether finance was there or not, I took it to, upon myself to say, I'll do whatever it takes, you know, and and I remember, I mean, when I started, I didn't have the capital. And one of the ways for me to raise the capital was to go um, sort of a pre-sale, you know. I'd approach a potential client to say, uh, I've got a potential of supplying you with this. Can you buy it from me? And, and they would pay me and then I would take the money, buy the stock and then sell it to them. So, so, you know, it was one of those cases where I would go to the supplier first to see what the supplier has, maybe... Um, uh, hold that stock and then try sell it uh, before I, I, I even bought it on the other side, you know, and, and that's how I build up on capital. And, and, and look, this is one of those industries, it's very small. Um, your word is it's, it's, it's sort of yeah, the final thing. So if, if, if you do well and you, you are a man of your word and you keep to your word, 
then the industry will open up to you. You know, more clients will come on board and they will trust you with their capital and so forth, you know? Yeah. You speak as a man of experience. Is it possible to be a diamond cutter and polisher without any qualifications? Look, in the past we've seen it happen a lot where a lot of uh, diamond cutters and polishers didn't have much education. But obviously with the times, the times have changed, you know, so much technology has been brought into the industry. It's not about just sitting and, and, and on the bench and cutting anymore, you know. And, and honestly speaking, the industry alone, I mean, this is, I could say, partly art and a lot of mathematics because there are a lot of numbers balancing those faces to make sure their sizes are equal and so forth. You know, it's, it's not something that you can just naturally do, you know, you need to learn to, just so you know how to balance your numbers and things like that. So, so it, education plays a critical role there. And I think more than anything with, with today's technology, not much of it you can handle unless you know how to. And that comes from making sure that you're educated enough in order to be able to handle it. And obviously, you know, I need to ask what has been the highest point of your career? Look, wow. Uh, look, there's been a lot of highlights, you know. I, I think the this industry has allowed me to travel the world to see what's out there and has opened up my mind so much you know um, through the industry one of the things that I've managed to do together with um, some of the emerging business was we were able to form an industry organization called the South African Young Diamond Beneficiators Guild which I currently sit as a president of you know and also, um, I mean, becoming a member of the South African Diamond Dealers Club was, was one, also one of the biggest highlights. I mean, this is an old industry organization, over 60 years old. And today to be sitting as the vice chairman of the club, you know, it's, it's, it's really made me a proud man, you know, <laughs> to say uh, I'm doing something right in the industry, you know. So, so for me, those are some of the things that have been the, the highlight, you know, becoming a client of De Beers, uh, becoming a client of Petra Diamonds, becoming a client of the State Diamond Trader. I mean, these are big entities. And to think that now an, an emerging company such as mine is able to play on that scale. And, and, and it, it, it's really been, been amazing for me, you know. What is the foundation of your business? Look, I'd say the foundation in terms of the business side of it is we, we basically buy rough diamonds. We cut and polish them and we sell them, you know, either being selling them as loose stones or in jewelry pieces, that, that's basically the essence of what we do, you know. But I see it more as, as selling, I don't wanna say I sell love, but I, I sell something that symbolizes love, you know, something that symbolizes prosperity, something that symbolizes endurance, you know. And this mainly, when you think about the formation of a diamond, it takes billions of years for it to be formed under, in the, underneath the world, you know? And, 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 and to think of a piece of coal or a piece of carbon that eventually comes such a brilliant thing, goes through so much endurance. I mean, when we cut and polish it, 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 it goes on those skies that we cut uh, the diamonds on, it gets so hot, you know, it goes those, through so much heat uh, it has to go through acids for boiling to bring out the brilliance and so forth, you know. So, so it really endures. And I believe when you buy a diamond, not only are you saying, uh, are you saying I love you, or, you know, a sense of prosperity, because not everybody at the end of the day can afford to buy a diamond, but you're also saying we can get through it all at the end of the day, you know. My last and final question to you is, what is the earning potential for someone in an industry like this? Look, it, uh, it differs um, with, with the level of where you are, you know. I mean, you, you have diamond cutters earning anything from, um, in dollar terms, earning anything from like $500 um, all the way to like $20,000 a month, you know. So the more you know, the more you get paid, you know. Um, once you, you become like a geologist, those guys that make sure the parameters are perfect and they're going for triple X and anything over around $20,000 and more, you know. Uh, but um, a basic polisher, you're looking at anything around $500, sometimes even less while you are still learning. But the more you enhance that skill, you know, the better um, the doors will be for you personally. Well, it was lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for all that information and thank you so much for having us over. Thank you so much.
For sure. Thank you. I definitely unpack so much about today's episode, but unfortunately, we have to say goodbye for now. Until next week, Monday, same time, same place. Don't forget, this is EduSpace, the hottest educational show in town. Please do tweet us at Soweto TV channel and don't forget to hashtag EduSpace. Share with us your thoughts and your views and what other careers you'd like us to cover. From me, Logan Lawson and the team, it is bye-bye for now. Until next week, Monday, same time, same place. EduSpace, your career choice.